is the ultimate goal of a believer? Where would you like to go ultimately? Can you say it loudly? Jannah. Everyone says Jannah. Destination, Jannah. We all would like to go to Jannah. I like to give a few examples. Number one, this event is probably one of the most well attended events I have ever been to. Takbir. Subhanallah. May Allah grant us success. I, grant, I ask Allah to grant all of us ease in our struggles. I am with my family and mashallah, we were standing up there watching what was going on and subhanallah, it brought tears to my eyes to see brothers and sisters, uncles and aunts, the elderly, the young, everyone coming, the practicing, the not so practicing, we're all in one huge boat. This is our boat. It's the ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa There is love for one another. You're struggling with your deen, I still love you. You're sailing through with your deen. I still love you, but be careful of shaitan. He comes to you and I as well. My brothers, my sisters, before you came here, you had to book a seat. Am I right or wrong? You had to book a seat in order to have this venue. You had to pay for the seat that you're sitting on. It was advertised a few months ago and many of you are known as early birds. What's an early bird? You get a bit of a discount. You get a what? A discount, early bird, mashallah. The brothers and the sisters who booked early, you paid less, mashallah. But what were you looking forward to? To meet this person, that person, to listen to this speech and that speech, to be motivated, to be guided, to feel good about myself, improve the goodness and to feel a little bit guilty about some of the wrong that I'm doing so that I can quit it. Sheikh Wa'il Ibrahim spoke to us in such an amazing way. Don't you agree? There we are. He actually analyzed words of songs and I'm thinking, oh, that's something interesting. And then he spoke about how if a person thinks smoking is good or whatever is good, they should or think about if they can say Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim before they start smoking. Can they say that? No, they can't, which means it's a bad thing. And when you're done smoking or your shisha, would you say Alhamdulillah? You wouldn't say that. Amazing. So we came in order to listen, to be reminded, to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We thank him for it, but we booked in advance so that we could attend here. And mashallah, some happened to book a little bit later, but we all did. And therefore, when you came in, you had to show them a little card. They looked at the card. They saw, they gave you a little seat somewhere here. And mashallah, you came and you sat and you sat for hours on end. I'm the last speaker. Should I cut my speech short or can I speak a little bit longer? Allah, Allah leads is leading the way, mashallah. Now I know why they call it leads, alhamdulillah. Subhanallah, leading the way. So I tell you, my brothers, my sisters, it's interesting to note that we had to book or save a seat. I need to save a seat, my own seat in Jannah. I also need to be an early bird. When I get to the other side, I need to show a card or they will show me my own card because they know the cards. What's going to happen? I will then be granted entry into Jannah and shown my place in Jannah. And I will have to be, mashallah, assuming, taking up that particular place that Allah has prepared for me. But I need to book. When I book, there is a payment. Early bird might pay a little bit less. If you practice the deen of Allah from an early age, the hadith says, Shabun nasha'a fi ibadatillahi ta'ala. A young person who grew up practicing and close to Allah, they will have a VIP status on the day of judgment. Because why? You're coming in, you've saved your seat from a very young age, early bird, as we would say. And as you come in, subhanallah, you are granted a special place of waiting and then in Jannatul Firdaus because Allah has praised you. But it's not too late for the others. Some of you might have booked as late as today or this afternoon, but you're still here. So even if we were not practicing from the very beginning, we are taught that if you, if you actually make amends, you repent to Allah, you turn to Allah before it is too late, Allah will grant you the loftiest and best ranks of Jannah. وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ أُولَٰئِكَ أَصْحَابُ الْجَنَّةِ 
those who believe and do good deeds, they are the dwellers of paradise. They will be in Jannah. They have saved their seats in paradise. But when it comes to those who have sinned and wronged, you and I, who have done things we are not so proud of, sometimes we feel, is my ticket valid or not? Will my ticket be accepted or not? Imagine coming to the door and you find that this ticket is actually entry into a totally different venue and a different event altogether. How would you feel? You feel like a fool that I booked the wrong ticket. Therefore, if a person were to do deeds that would result in them entering hellfire and then expected to enter Jannah, Allah says, if you're alive, you can quickly change that. And it's not going to be so difficult to change that by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says, when you repent to us, and these are the divine words of Allah, when you repent to us, there are two things. You ask Allah's forgiveness, He forgives you. But you ask Allah's forgiveness again, He forgives you again. You ask Him a third time, He'll forgive you a third time and so on. The mere fact that you are asking the forgiveness of Allah shows that you love Him, you consider Him your Lord, you know He owns heaven and hell, you know He owns forgiveness or punishment, you know that He is the ultimate creator and the supreme deity. So that itself is the worship of Allah. I seek the forgiveness of Allah only if I believe he owns forgiveness. He is Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, Al-Wadud, the most forgiving, the most merciful, the most loving, the most kind, the most compassionate. That is my Lord, Rabbul Izzati Wal Jalal. So Allah Almighty tells us, if you seek forgiveness, I will forgive you. But there is a step higher than that, which I want to talk about tonight. You want to save your seat in Jannah, Allah says, if after you sought forgiveness of us or from us, you changed your life in a way that you only did good deeds, we will take all the bad deeds you've done in the past and we will convert them into good deeds and put them onto the right side of the scale as though they were good deeds yet when they were done they were bad deeds imagine the mercy of allah so to achieve that bonus there are two conditions the first is seek the forgiveness of allah and the second is to do good deeds thereafter i don't keep sliding back all the time Amazing verses of Surah Al Furqan. Allah says, The exception, the exception of what? Those who've done bad and they deserve to enter hellfire. Allah says the exception are those who repent and do good deeds thereafter. They are the ones whose bad deeds will be changed into good deeds for them. For indeed, Allah is most forgiving, most merciful. That's the mercy of Allah. Where do I get this from? The Quran, the divine revelation. Allah Almighty tells you, oh man, do not lose hope. What have you done? Where have you been? No matter where you've been and what you've done, it's not too late. This evening, when I was outside, a sister came to me and told me, pray for me, my Iman is weak. I said, sister, Allah will help you with it by hook or crook. Subhanallah, Subhanallah. May Allah grant her goodness and all of us, myself included, goodness. May Allah grant us death upon La ilaha illallah. My brothers and sisters, as I speak, there are thousands of people who are not Muslim who are studying the Quran and studying the life of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and being inspired by true Muslims. But you and I who are Muslim, what are we doing with the Quran? Are we going to read it? Are we going to be inspired by it? Are we going to understand that that is the word of Allah and that is the ultimate gift that Allah has blessed you with and Allah has blessed me with? May Allah Almighty grant us the ability to appreciate the status of His word. May Allah Almighty grant us goodness. Amen. My brothers, my sisters, Remember that if Allah has chosen you, Allah Almighty will make easy for you to do good. 
And this is Allah. Allah Almighty says, when you have a good heart and you are generous and you care for others, He will slowly but surely make easy for you the deeds that are pleasing to Him. And when you are arrogant and haughty and you are miserly and you don't spend on others and you're only worried about yourself, Allah says, He facilitates for you deeds that will result in you unplugging from Him and distancing from Allah. Read Surah Al-Layl. Verses, I explained them just before I recited them. May Allah Almighty grant us ease in a way that brings us closer and closer to Him as the days pass. My brothers and sisters, many of us are struggling with faith. Connect with the Quran, read a little bit of it, a portion of it, make an effort. Without making an effort, you're not going to get anywhere. Listen to what Allah says. وَالَّذِينَ جَاهَدُوا فِيْنَا لَنَهْدِيَنَّهُمْ سُبُلَنَا وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَمَعَ الْمُحْسِنِينَ those who are going to strive and work hard and struggle, strive towards us. You strive towards Allah. You want to get Allah. You are serious and genuine about your claim that you would like to get closer to Allah. You want to strengthen your faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says, we will definitely guide them towards our paths. We will definitely open for them the doors that will lead them to us. So many doors lead you towards Allah. Your prayer leads you towards Allah. Your charity leads you towards Allah. Allah says, lend Allah a beautiful loan. What's the meaning of that? Do so much of good and be so charitable that you have lent Allah alone. He needs to recompense it for you. Did Allah not promise you when you do salah, I will reward you. When you've given zakah, I will reward you. When you struggle and strive towards pleasing us, I will reward you. Where is that reward? In this world, we may or may not see it. But in the hereafter, I'm waiting. Why? I lent Allah a good loan. I'm going to see it come back to me multiplied by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you see the reward of the patience that you bore because you were terminally ill, you will say to Allah, why didn't you keep me ill for a longer time? This is an amazing, beautiful reward. When you see the reward that Allah has kept in store for you for standing at night in prayer, for getting up against all odds in the cold weather, you will think to yourself, I should have done this longer and I should have actually done this for a longer time and started earlier on in my life. May Allah grant us a turning point in the right direction. I mean, so if you're not going to make an effort, it's not coming. Allah says, Wa inna allaha lama al Allah is the one who is with those who do good. You want to do good. You are really striving towards Allah. Make an effort. It's not just lip service. Someone says, my brother, when are you going to do this? talking about something you're supposed to do. Let me give you an example. When are you going to quit smoking? You say, inshallah, inshallah. You know what inshallah means? What does it mean? If Allah wills. But the way you say it means a lot. Because if you just say, someone asks you, when are you going to quit smoking? You say, inshallah. That means I'm not quitting smoking. That's what it means. Because the way you said it, someone says, when are you going to be dressed appropriately? They say, inshallah, pray for me. I've had kids who've come and said, make dua for me. Make dua. You meet them a year later, even worse. What happened? Make dua for me. Then you meet them a year later, even worse. They tell you, Sheikh, you're not making dua. It's like you're blaming me because you haven't come right. Come on, come on, man. You're blaming me. I'm sure if I see them four years later, they're going to say, Sheikh, you didn't make dua. Maybe if we see them in Jahannam, may Allah safeguard us. Well, we probably wouldn't because we don't want to be there. To see them in Jahannam, you've got to be there, right? I always tell people when you say that guy's in Jahannam, this guy's going to hell, that guy's going to hell. You have to be there to have known who's there. Come on, guys. Right? As I don't doom people. You want to doom them? You are doomed before them. But what I mean is such a person might even blame you to say, you know what? You didn't make strong dua for me. Look where I am. <laughs> That's not happening. 
That's not happening. No one is going to take the burden of another. Each one of us, we are responsible for our deeds. I'm responsible for mine. You're responsible for yours. My brothers and sisters, this is why you need to make the effort. Don't just say, inshallah. Say, I've left it. I've quit it. Here it is. It's gone. I've stamped it. That's the last cigarette. I'm never going to smoke again. Allahu Akbar. You're speaking. When you are reminded of Allah, وَالَّذِينَ إِذَا ذُكِّرُوا بِآيَاتِ رَبِّهِمْ لَمْ يَخِرُّوا عَلَيْهَا لَمْ يَخِرُّوا عَلَيْهَا صُمًّا وَعُمْيَانًا The true believers in Allah are those whom when they are reminded about Allah, when they are reminded regarding the rules, the regulations, the do's, the don'ts, they do not turn a blind eye or a deaf ear, but rather they take it seriously. They take it seriously. The Sahaba radiallahu anhum, companions of Muhammad, peace be upon him, were chosen by Allah because they had in them the capacity that when they were told, Alcohol is haram. They spat it out or they dropped it or they let go of it and immediately they stopped it. That's what, that's what the Sahaba radiallahu anhum did. But with us, subhanallah, subhanallah. With us, I tell you what happens when we are told what's right and wrong, guess what? We still have a choice according to us. We think we have a choice. It's okay. No, don't worry. I'm weak. No, you're not weak. You are very strong. Allah gave you the strength. Don't worry about what others are going to think. If anything, they're going to follow suit. If anything, they're going to come forth. If anything, they will learn from you. If anything, they were waiting for your example. When you did the right thing, they all started doing the right thing. You might struggle a little bit. It's okay. But then when they see your determination and what you're doing is correct, Allah will grant you and them Jannah as a result of your togetherness and the fact that you improved together for the cause of Allah subhanahu you're resurrected with your group. You're resurrected with those whom you hanged around with. You're resurrected with those whom you love. These are the narrations of the Prophet ﷺ and even verses of the Quran. May Allah Almighty grant us goodness. My brothers and sisters, don't undervalue and underestimate the strength that Allah's given you. Don't think I'm weak. You are strong by the will of Allah. You are strong. You need to make an effort and you need to promise Allah. You, we are here this evening. I sat here listening to speaker after speaker. And to be honest with you, in my heart, I felt I need this reminder. I need that reminder. This is for me. That's for me. And I really would like to improve myself. And we all need to be the same. If you're seated here, something needs to improve in you as you walk out today. Your character needs to improve as we walk out. We're not going to be rude to one another. We're not going to be vulgar, abusive, we're going to be courteous, we're going to look out for one another, we're going to be together in a way that we help one another. We're a united ummah. That is when we've achieved. But if we go out from this place without having achieved anything, wallahi, we will be questioned. Were you not there one day? Did you not sit there? Did you not hear this? What did you do about it? Well, I just said, inshallah. Come on. We can't do that. Are we going to change? Yes, inshallah. We say, yes, inshallah. Change for the will of... May Allah grant me a good change, positive change. May Allah strengthen me to do the right thing. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help me to quit my bad ways, my habits. Amen. And if you falter because of human weakness, come back quickly. Come back quickly. One thing you have to do that is repeated in the Quran so many times. If it was mentioned once in the Quran that you need to pray, it was enough. If Allah said it once in the Quran that you need to pray, it was enough. But so many places Allah says, Aqimu salata wa atu zakata. Ya ayyuha alladheena amanu rka'u wa sjudu wa abudu rabbakum wa fa'alu al-khayra la'allakum tuflihoon. Allah tells you to bow down, to prostrate and so more than once. So many places in the Quran Allah says, here it is, you bow down and you go and you prostrate for Allah and you pray for Allah. He could have said it once. He says it again and again and again because he wants it to bear witness for you or against you. And he wants it to be a reminder. Remind, for indeed the reminder benefits those who believe. You believe in Allah? Well, then don't be upset when someone reminds you, Listen, my sister, you need to do this. Listen, my brother, you need to do this. Listen, my sister or my brother, you need to quit this and quit that. 
It's not a bad thing. Don't become too defensive. Just say Alhamdulillah. But I want to tell all of us, brother Akhi Ayman said moments ago, he spoke about TikTok, right? I tell you what people are doing. Unfortunately, people sit on other people's TikToks and watch them as they flick. And the only thing they can do is to comment negatively without giving anyone a word of encouragement, without saying anything. You have people who accepted Islam now, now. And the next thing you find all these Muslims bombarding them with so much. Do you reckon that's divine? Do you think that that's the way Allah wanted it? To bombard someone with so much that they feel trapped and they think to themselves, what did I just do? I always say you reverted to Islam or you're newly practicing. Please move closer to Allah at your pace, but at a decent pace for as long as you know and Allah knows that you're heading in the right direction to the best of your capacity and ability. Inshallah, you're doing the right thing. People are weak when it comes to fulfilling their salah, but they're born Muslim. And the same guys are attacking people who have a different weakness as though they have no weakness whatsoever. I'm not saying don't remind. But when you remind people, do so with utmost respect, putting yourself in their shoes, do so in a manner that is so appealing that they feel like changing. You can't look at someone and say, well, I was about to use a, a bad word. Let's not use it. Or should I use it? Shouldn't I? It's not such a bad word. Like they say, you know, haram, but not haram, haram, you know. You know, the words are becoming less and less bad according to the age, but in the eyes of Allah, they're bad. I was going to use the word <coughs> idiot, but I won't use it. <laughs> How's that? It's like when you want to tell someone how stupid they are, you say, I was going to tell you how stupid you are, but I decided against it. That means you're so stupid, you know, you're going to say, you know what? I was going to call you an idiot, but I think I won't. Subhanallah, it means you're a big idiot. That's what it means. May Allah forgive us. So I won't use the word. Okay, but people use these words for others. And you know what? They are perhaps in the eyes of Allah worse than those whom they are attacking, but they're just enjoying it on. And you don't know the amount of pain you caused people. You will pay for that pain. My brother, my sister, rather say an encouraging word, rather encourage people in a positive way. Learn it. If you don't know how to do it, remain silent because it's going to be held for you you or against you on the day of Qiyamah, the day of judgment. It's going to be held for you or against you. I'm not going to sit and pass bad comments. I do sometimes see your posts, people who are here. I see your posts sometimes. I do. I'm a human and I do use social media. So as I'm going up, the chances are I probably would see what would I do? I probably would comment. Subhanallah, but make sure it's me, please. Right? May Allah grant us ease. The last time I checked, there were about 10,000 Mufti Menk accounts. I didn't know who I was. I'm looking, wallahi, I look at people who have more content than I do of my own and they have more followers than I do. <laughs> and I'm thinking to myself, that's supposed to be Mufti Men. Can you tell the guy, can you please delete this video? It's not supposed to be, it's a private video. And they don't answer. They say, no, you can, you know, literally you can go to hell, basically. And I'm thinking, let's see who's going to go to hell. Allah Almighty forgive us. People make accounts of everybody's names. Some of you might have people who, who love you so much that they make accounts and sometimes they hate you so much that they make accounts to tarnish your image. This is what the world is all about now. Be careful. You do not be on the wrong side of it because we are believers. We know we are responsible. We know every action has a reaction. As believers, you do good, you get good multiplied. You do bad, you get bad multiplied. Subhanallah. Bad meaning it's going to come back to you to haunt you. I know when you've committed a sin against Allah, it's one for one. And when you did a good deed for Allah, it's one multiplied. But when you commit a sin against someone else, it's coming back to haunt you. It's definitely coming to haunt you. May Allah Almighty grant us steadfastness and may we never be from among those who hurt and abuse others. So you don't just sit and enjoy looking at things. I was saying, sometimes I comment, I would only say a good thing, no matter who it is. Once I had a brother tell me, Sheikh Astaghfirullah, you commented on this sister's post. Why were you watching sister's posts? I said, well, why were you watching not just the post, but even went down and looked at the comments? I mean, what's good for the goose has to be good for the gander, isn't it? Come on. You're telling me why was I? It was just a natural human thing. Not that I watched the whole thing. Who knows what I was focused on? Akhi Ayman tells me it's easy for me to lower my gaze because I need to wear glasses. All I do, I take them out. 
He says, when I look at the crowd, I get so much of confidence because I can't really see the guys in front of me. MashaAllah, Tabarakallah, my brother. Sorry about that. May Allah Almighty grant us ease. May Allah Almighty grant us goodness and ease. But the truth of the matter is, you're a human. You may come across something. It doesn't mean you're not allowed to say a word of encouragement. You can, no matter who you are. Sometimes you're on your public transport, walking around a mall. We're human beings. The kuffar of the time addressed a matter by saying, look at this man claiming to be a prophet. But what is the problem? What is wrong with him? He still walks in the markets and he still eats food. If he was a prophet, Allah would have sent an angel and so on and so forth. Wallahi, Allah Almighty says he is a prophet. He is the best of creation, the most noble of all prophets, the highest, the flawless, whatever other positive quality, all of them are his. But we've created him in a way that he will still walk through the markets and he will still eat food. Allahu Akbar. We are not even prophets, nowhere near. We will walk in the markets. We, we might even end up you know, needing to improve ourselves because we are not prophets of Allah. If I were to walk past, you know, today someone comes, can I take a picture with you? A young, young girl. And I was walking with my wife a few minutes ago at the back there and I said, you can ask her. Right? And I don't know if they understood it or not. Subhanallah. But anyway, they did. May Allah Almighty grant us ease. I am a human. I'm a father of so many children and grandchildren by the will of Allah. If I were to see someone, I have within me a quality where I'd like to correct you and rectify you in the most loving way. I would greet you. I'd smile at you. I'd wave at you. I'd thumbs up you. I would do whatever. Sometimes I don't even know some of the signs that the kids make and someone do you know that's satanic? I said, no, I don't know. It's satanic. I don't know the last, you know, so many things we used to do when we were kids that we considered just normal have been hijacked by ideologies and thoughts of today and sometimes you don't realize that this is now a sign that stands for something totally different i talked to you about tiktok earlier imagine an old man telling me tiktok and i'm thinking wow this man is on tiktok he says no it means i'm fine urdu speaking hindi speaking wow may allah almighty bless all of us but you know what the world has changed you need to be up to the joneses in in that sense but not that i compete with others in material wealth i want to compete with myself in getting closer to Allah by looking at those who are doing more and being encouraged to be a better person. If you made it to the end of the video, please like the video as a sadqa jariya so more and more people can watch it and you will get sawab for whoever watches it. We don't earn money from YouTube ads so you can support our channel from the link in the description so we can keep making new videos and you can subscribe to our channel. Jazakallah.